Hello, I'm Andrew. I'm an applications engineer with Omron. And in this video, I hope to show how we can use a couple of Ethernet IP communication instructions inside every NJ and NX controller to simply move data from one controller to another. So this image is just showing you how Inside the program, you can call an instruction to send data to a controller. You can read data from a controller. Any controller can read and write data to any system. There's also a method to read within Ethernet IP. There's also another method called uh, tag data links to exchange data. Now, tag data links uh, is set up in a different way, um, such that data is shared automatically in the background. So a configuration tool is needed to set up this network system. And with the method I'm going to show you, we don't need to use that system that happens automatically in the background. So there are two tools. One tool um, that comes within Sysmax Studio is called um, well, it's the Ethernet IP Connection Settings dialog that you open up from the Tools menu inside Sysmax. And there's also another tool called Network Configurator that is installed when you install uh, Sysmax Studio. It's a separate tool and you'll find it in the CX1 folder. For my demonstration, I have some hardware uh, in a demo case uh, that consists of one NJ controller and one NX controller and a switch, and my laptop is connected to that switch. We can also uh, easily add many other controllers, as many as you want to a degree, um, into your system. So there isn't really uh, a practical limit, you could say. On this slide, I'm showing you the plan of what we intend to do, the plan of what I intend to do in the example project. So I have an NJ controller and an NX controller. They have their individual IP addresses, which um, I won't discuss, but set in the normal way. In the NJ controller, I'm going to use the two instructions, one to read and one to write data to and from the NX controller. So these two instructions could live in any controller in any part of our network. On this slide, you can see I'm just pointing out some help resources, which might be useful to look up if you need to uh, adjust the root path notation. Uh, the root path notation um, is probably explained best by looking at the examples in the documentation that gets installed when you install SysMac. So let's start with an example and create a project. So I select an NJ controller as a new project. And then inside this project, I wish to add an NX controller by using the controller insert, select the NX controller. And there I have two controllers in my project. And as per the plan, I need to add a couple of global variables I'm going to use those array variables, each with 100 words.
And one important part not to forget is that you must apply the publish property to those variables. If you don't apply the publish property, it's not going to work. So I've added a handful of instructions to both the NJ and the NX controller to implement this bit of data exchange between the two controllers. So here are my two controllers. So let's take a look, quick look at the NX program. There we have the two variables that we have set to publish. And the only bit of program I have in this controller is a memory copy instruction just to echo the array from one place to the next. So it just literally takes the array value and just copies it straight out. So it creates a copy so we can do like a loop test for this um, communication. So if we now go and have a look at the NJ controller and see the programming as it is in here. This program called Data Exchange with a section called NX1. And inside there you'll see we have the write and the read instruction. And I've got a couple of coils just to uh, activate the execute onto those function blocks. And you might notice that we're using the system variable shown in red, the EIP ETN online STA, which is Ethernet IP online status. Uh, so that needs to be on for Ethernet IP to be working. So we'll have that in that rung. So at the top rung, you can see that we have three variables set. And these are used to populate the string variables by these instructions. The root path is what the NJ will use to find the data and the data has to be named in the DSD dat variable name inside the instruction and the SRC dat for the read instruction. So you'll see that's called var name to read and var name to write in this example. The write function block needs some source data from the NJ to send. And I have a variable declared locally as NX array out. This must be the same data type and size as the destination data. Also, for reading, we need to have some source data, which is the var name to read, and we need to store it somewhere locally on the NJ, and I've created a variable an array variable of the same size called nx array in and that's the local variable which is the destination data for the read so what i want to do now is to open up a data trace just so we can see the timing of this instruction and it operating because it's going to run very fast. We won't see anything on the screen in real time. So we use the data trace just to record what's happening. So 
So I set the data trace up earlier. So we can see various data types from the program being used that we're, we're going to record. Um, and we set the trigger to run. Well, actually, when I start the writing, the trigger will run and we'll get capture the data. So now we're waiting for the data and we'll run the test. Using the watch window, I can just check and see the data has rippled through. So we've got the data we're sending. It's been received in the NX. It's come back to the NJ. If we look at the data trace, it's now been repopulated and we can see the various status bits from the function block have rippled through and we can see the data change. Just to check again, put in some different data into the array in the NJ. Send it to the NX. The NX will copy it back to itself and we will read that copy at a different variable. Now you can see the data has gone through the system within a few milliseconds. So something very useful uh, with this method of exchanging data over the Ethernet IP um, facility is that we can, inside the program, retain the Ethernet IP connections. And inside the program, we can also change them. So we can choose, uh, we could effectively set the network up from the program or from the HMI. So that gives us an option to uh, connect machines together programmatically and even by the operator, which is something that um, tag data links uh, wouldn't allow us to do. So here we can see the, uh, the use of a Comcat just to explain how that might be done. One final point, just to demonstrate that when we select a variable uh, to be shared over Ethernet IP network, by this method, we said publish only, which actually means it's both read and write. So just doing a, a quick edit so that we can see this working. So now we're going to use the read instruction to read from the NX controller the variable that we were previously writing to, just to, to demonstrate that it's, it's not read or write only, it's read and write. So there we've sent, we set some data directly in the NX, triggered the read and you can see it Will come through. Right here I'm entering the, vari the string variable for the other controller and as we've seen you, this could be um, built by the program. And then when we execute we see we get the data back from the NX controller into the NJ.
And that's all. Thank you for listening.